George Street, Luton in 1999. 60 years ago the Polly family were evacuated to Luton and now make this return journey to see what changes have occurred. The most striking building in Luton is the Town Hall, opened in 1936, three years before the war broke out. Because it was built of white stone, the building was such a prominent focal point it would have made an ideal target for enemy bombers. So it was covered in a drab net type of camouflage. Since the war, it's been restored to its former glory as headquarters of the local council. George Street is now traffic free, reserved only for pedestrians. And then looking northwards along the road to Bedford, double yellow lines which didn't exist in the 40s, and the old railway bridge which used to advertise the Luton News is still there. This area was full of buildings, the Alma and Palace Cinemas, Public Library and Bus Terminus and Williamson Street, all gone. Now an open space, backed by a new library and a leisure complex. This was the Union Cinema where I saw many films. It boasted a fine, gigantic Wurlitzer organ. Today, a sad looking nightclub, The Zone. In Waller Street was the Grand Theatre, long since gone. I was often taken by father to see stage shows here. Seats in the gallery, one shilling. In recent years, a giant shopping complex has replaced the smaller shops in George Street and the surrounding area. The Arndale Centre, clean and modern. I'm sure that the old shops were much more interesting. And now to Oakley Road, where in 1941 we rented number 30, owned by the Browns. Mr Brown in peacetime had a small motor garage next to the house and it's still there. At the top of the road, the garage, Shaw and Kilburn's, the army requisitioned, and it was there that father was posted. Father's office was top right next to the showroom that in the 1990s it's all been demolished to make way for a computer supermarket. Dunstable Road looking east. When we first arrived in Luton we stayed with the Robinsons at number 40 Lucy Road. That's the semi-detached on the right. There was a brick air raid shelter in the garden and we spent many nights in there while the air raid alert was on. Our local shops included the Brown Owl Grocery and Dumbledon's Bakery. It's now a bank. Lucy Road is two miles from Dunstable where I cycle to school each day. Dunstable High Street, part of the original Watling Street, has much changed and this is all that's left of the old town hall. The major crossing is quiet on a Sunday, but you want to see it on a Monday and the rest of the week. The Methodist Church in the square where we worshipped. One of my schoolmasters, Mr. Boskett, played the organ. The organ's just above the pulpit. Looking northwards in High Street, it was here that my sister Jean went to Miss Chambers' school. In September 1940, I was accepted for the grammar school. No longer grammar, but comprehensive. It's a fine building, dating from 1887 at the bequest of a Mrs. Frances Ashton. 11-year-old Bernard Polly from Form 1 in one of those panoramic school photos. They were great days, and in spite of wartime problems, the education was good and strict under Headmaster Alan Evans. The school gymnasium and science blocks seen through the bushes. And the main entrance to the school, 
I'll leave my reminiscences with a look at the masters who taught me in 1940 through to 1942.